Hello and welcome to this week's newsletter and Christmas has arrived once again. A month later, we've had a Christmas present in here in the Pro Shop because look what have arrived. The TaylorMade Stealth and the Callaway Rogues. Very, very excited to try these, okay? So yeah, we've got them in stock. We've got the fitting heads in stock anyway, okay? Release is not till next month. I think Callaway is the 18th of Feb, I seem to think it springs to mind, so you can't actually get your hands on one for yourself until after that, and TaylorMade's about the same, I think. Similar sort of dates, okay? But I've got the fitting kits in, so lots of different shafts, lots of different heads to come in and try. So if you do, if you are interested in trying the new Stealth with its new carbon face or the new Callaway Rogue, then come and book yourself a fitting. We've got all the different heads, all the different shafts um, to try and tailor to suit your game, as well as obviously all the ping uh, shafts and heads as well. So yeah, very exciting. So where should we start? Well, the buzz is all about the tailor-made stealth, isn't it? So we better start there really, okay? Um, I'm gonna try a few. We're gonna compare uh, my old, not my old, but last year's Callaway Epic compared to this year's Callaway Rogue, compared to this year's TaylorMade Stealth, okay? I've got my shaft from my Callaway Epic in there, okay? So that should be very much the same, very much the same. I'm trying the Max LS, the low spin head on the Rogue, and I'm trying the Stealth, Stealth Plus, uh, nine degrees. The Stealth Plus, the plus is the movable weight. I've left it in the middle. I don't need any help there, really, to be honest. But it's always a, a, a kind of thing to have if you do struggle with a fade or a hook or a slice, yeah, then it's good to be able to move these weights to and from the toe to control the face, okay? But I've got left mine in the middle, yeah? It's a Stealth Plus because it's the nine degree head that we've got. Uh, this one's also nine degrees as well. So let's start with a bit of the, the bit of the, what do we call it? The technology or do we call it the sales gimmick, the marketing anyway? You know what it's all about, don't you? But let's just go through and let's see what Taylor May say about the new stealth and why it's creating such a buzz. And I have heard some fantastic things out there that they are going really, really well, okay? Uh, it does seem to come off the fast, face very fast, but maybe spins a little bit more. But we'll, we'll have a go in a minute and we'll see what happens. So, the new tailor-made carbon wood stealth, okay? The carbon wood age. For the last 20 years, titanium was all the rage, but we have always known that every material has a limit. So we started pushing beyond the boundaries and we're now leaving the old race behind to begin a completely new one. The race that drives beyond the here and now to raise the bar for what's possible. After 20 years in the making, the limits of titanium have been broken, introducing stealth drivers with 60X carbon twist faced. Welcome to the carbon face. Why carbon? The future performance begins with carbon twist face. Compromise of 60 layers of carbon sheets strategically arranged for better energy transfer and faster ball speeds across the larger of the face. Optimal launch and spin, our 20 year journey to change the face of golf was made possible by the innovative nano texture cover, which creates the face texture needed to produce the ideal amount of friction at impact. The polyurethane cover encases the entire face to fine tune launch, spin, optimizing total distance in playing conditions. Increased forgiveness and draw bias design. Historically, draw bias drivers have not been forgiving as the higher CG needed to create the necessary spin led to a lower MOI. Stealth HD flips the design head, convention its head, delivers draw bias with a stable feel. It's also got a premium sound. Knowing that sound is critical component of feel, it's very true in here. We always very much, the acoustics in here are great. You really do hear the difference between good shots and bad shots. Our team of engineers obsessed over creating the perfect sound with stealth. They use combination of curvature shape and internal stiffening ribs to finely tune acoustics, delivering a sound profile that is both bright and powerful to match driver, tailor-made drivers throughout recent years. Um, then it goes into the aerodynamics of it all, which pretty much happened in the sim, okay? And we've still got the, the fin on the back there as well, okay? The, sh the moment, the shaping motion of the sim, etc. yeah, okay? But it's all about that carbon face. And apparently, it's a lot more forgiving, and apparently it goes uh, a lot further, faster ball speeds, we shall see in a minute. But certainly, looks-wise, yeah. It really does look absolutely stunning. They've gone away from their sort of matte grey, blue, black lines that they've done with the 
the, the last few M series clubs and now into the Sim series, they've gone for the jet black finish. Still matte finished, but it really does look beautiful. It really looks stunning. Tailor made, always Mike. Very good looking golf clubs. On to the Callaway Rogue. Okay, so let's see the Callaway Rogue. Again, they've gone for a matte finish this year as well. Okay, none of the shiny head feature. I think I prefer the matte finish, to be honest. My last year's Epic was a kind of glossy finish, but I prefer the matte finish. It just makes the head maybe look a little bit bigger and maybe that bit more forgiving. I don't know. It might be psychological because the head is the same size. Okay, but it just makes it look just that little bit bigger and maybe that bit more forgiving so I can swing at it faster with a bit more confidence. I don't know, but certainly I do like the look of the new Rogue, just because that matte finish makes a bit of a difference. So what do they say, Callaway say about the Rogue? Obviously it's got a titanium face, so they tried, they tried the carbon face 20 years ago. They've been there, done that, they say, okay? Taylor made is 20 years behind the times, they say. We shall see, won't we, okay? They tried it, didn't really work for them, but obviously technology has moved on, and you know, it's moved on. Carbon face to be a different carbon face to what Callaway tried, don't it? So it'll be interesting to find out. Let's see what Callaway have got to say about their drivers. Again, you've got a low spin model, you've got a Max D model with the shape. So, low spin model is for me, you know, spins them all lots. You've got the Max D with the weight in the heel to help you square the club face up and the standard Max, okay? So, let's see what they've got to say about that. The Callaway Rogue is our highest MO high with a slight draw bias. This is for the Max, okay? Slight draw bias that's built for all levels of all golfer, okay? Increased spade stability and higher MOI from the new all tungsten speed cartridge, which is that little thing at the back. See the little orange thing at the back there? That's their speed cartridge. The groundbreaking new tungsten speed cartridge structure places up to 26 grams low and deep in the drive head. This increases an off-centre hit and provides more forgiveness through the moment of inertia. Uh, it's still got the jailbreak technology, which is that kind of there. They've had that in their drivers for a long time now. Um, two kind of, if you like, strong steel bars. I guess to go through there, okay, it's down the middle there. They've still got that, okay. What do they say about those? They say, uh, where are we? Uh, our patented AI design jailbreak speed from provides stability in the horizontal and tor torsional direction. We've speed tuned the construction, shaping and position to deliver even more speed across their face. Yeah. Uh, the new AI design face for low spin and increased forgiveness. Forgiveness as an industry lever, we've added launch and spin to the ball on our new optimization formula. This formula is a lower spin on the face. So we can see that if you've got close up there, it's kind of smaller, thinner grooves almost there uh, without any of the thick, deep grooves. So yeah, slightly different face on it as well. That's what it's all about there. You can't really see that on the screen. And lastly, stability and forgiveness from unibody construction. The titanium unibody construction provides stability and lowers the center of gravity while proprietary triaxial carbon crown and sole allow us to save weight. This weight is precisely redistributed, increasing forgiveness with high launch and slight draw bias. Well, that's the technical stuff, isn't it? But we all wanna know how far they go. So I'm gonna hit five drivers with mine. Oh, epic. I'm gonna hit five with the Rogue and I'm gonna hit five with the Stealth. Let's start with the Rogue first and let's see how that performs. Proper test, glove on, find the ball, away we go. I'm doing it with the ball that I now use, by the way, which is the Callaway Crowsoft Low Spin. Okay, so we do it with that because that's the ball I normally use. Let's have a go. So like I say, I like the way the new Rogue head looks. That matte finish, I believe, makes it look a little bit more forgiving and a little bit bigger. Let's have a look and let's see how it feels. Let's hit one. Certainly went very nicely. Came off the face of a nice trajectory. Wouldn't say it's my most athletic swing, but 271, not bad for a first attempt there. But certainly like the way that came off the face, certainly like the way it felt, certainly like the way it sounded. Right, I'll hit four more, then I'll give the stealth a go. To the stealth, we've heard all about the technology. Is the carbon wood face all that it's cracked up to be? Let's have a little look. So like I said earlier, I love the way it looks. Tailor made. 
do make some fantastic looking golf clubs and this Stealth is no exception. It's beautiful with that jet black finish. It's really, really nice to look at. It's got my old shaft in there that I used to use when I used to use Taylor Wade drivers. So I've still got that. So which is very similar to my shaft that I've got in my Callaway at the moment. But yes, let's have a go. Listen to the noise. See if you can hear the difference in the face. Not too different in the face, didn't sound any, any different, did it? And it certainly went well, and a little bit longer that time with the Stealth than it was with the Callaway. Let me hit a few more, and then we'll compare the results in a minute. Right, okay, let's have a look at the results then. So we've got the Callaway Rogue up the top here, okay? So on average, 260 carry, 281 in total, averaging 5.4 yards offline, okay? So that's that bottom gray number there. You can see where I am with the cursor, okay? So very impressive, which is longer than my current driver, my Epic, by a good eight yards. Um, not sure what that is all about. Maybe I did hit my driver to start off with, maybe not quite as loose, but I certainly felt like I was certainly hitting that... Uh, uh, rogue a lot better than mine and was spinning it an awful lot less. That's what it felt like. Yeah, there we go. Look, so there's a big of a difference. Spin rate on average with my Callaway was 2250. With my previous Callaway, the Epic was 2431. So spin rates just dropped a little bit, hence why I'm probably hitting it a little bit further. Okay. Ball speed, very similar look, but launched was slightly different. So that's interesting. Straight away, that's gained me a bit of yardage. Okay. Now down to the stealth. Oh, look at that, two yards in it. So 260 average carry with mine, the Rogue, I mean, and 258 average carry with the Stealth. That's down this column here, look, yeah? Okay, so we're down here, this column here. Okay, so 258, 279 total as against a 281 total just up here. Averaging 6.5 yards right, so very straight, actually. What's the difference? Again, it's spin rate. Look, if we look down here, look, it's coming kind of fast. Two miles an hour faster with the carbon face. Two miles an hour faster. We'll take that. Not one under 150. So very consistent. But spin was just a little bit high, even though I've got a low launching, low spinning shaft, 2,500 as opposed to 2,250 with the Rogue. So it's all about the spin rate for me. Yeah, 149 ball speed with a Callaway Rogue. 151 with the tailor-made stealth so yeah coming off the face a lot faster or two mile an hour faster with a stealth but because it's just spinning that little bit more it's actually costing me a little bit more distance so that's interesting that's what i have heard i have heard on the grapevine that is a quite a common thing but all in all both very impressive and i would say both are very much better than last year's driver for me um certainly with the, the colorway hit it very very well so really nothing to choose between the two both very 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 good uh, yes, TaylorMade Stealth was coming off the face faster. Okay, that's got to be a good thing. Ball speed is so, so important, isn't it? 151 average for me. That's pretty good for me, definitely. Callaway a bit slower, but was just spinning a little bit less. So, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. So if you need a bit more backspin, then maybe the Stealth might be the way forward. We won't know what you need until you come and have a driver fitting. Uh, because... You might need more spin, you might need less spin to get your optimal ball, chart, uh, ball flight. Yeah, we've got our charts on the chart on the wall here that Ping has got that gives us, yeah, okay? And it gives us your optimal ball flight numbers that we've got to try and get to when we are fitting a driver, okay? So, yeah, both equally as good as each other in my eyes. Um, I probably do favour the Callaway that little bit more just because I hate spinning the ball too much because I hit it too high, yeah, okay? So for me and my own personal choppy golf swing where I hit down it too much, uh, the Callaway probably suits me just that little bit better. My shaft and that head combination work well for me. But yeah, just come and book yourself a fitting. Come try them out. Fittings are £30 for the hour. So, sorry, £35 for the hour. Come and try it out. Even if you go away and you're not going to gain anything, it might be worth just finding out and trying them and seeing how you get on with them, yeah? Okay, and then you can make, work out at the end of the session, look, yeah, okay, £450, a lot of money um, for a new driver, but I am going to gain X amount of yards. Trade in your old one, and that just lowers the price a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, but yeah, only you will know whether, how, whether a new driver will be worth it or not, but at least come and have a try.
Right, next we'll move on to competition news. And we had a couple of competitions played last week here at Goulston Golf Club. And we'll go back to last Thursday's men's midweek Stapleford, where Graham Holmes won Division 1 with 34 points. Well done. He beat Martin Pesso into second on 33 and Jim Robinson into third on 32. In Division 2, David Cook, he won Division 2 with 36 points, beating Kevin Neal, Milne into second on 36 points as well, but on count back, Steve Rainbow in third on 35. And in Division 3, Justin Nichols, well done Justin, he won with 38 points, he beat Jack Flaxman into second on 35 points, who beat Stephen G on count back, also on 35 points. On Sunday, uh, we had the mixed monthly Stableford, where Steve Limbert, well done Steve, he got 38 points, nice to see that Steve. He beat Ben Lutie into second on 36 points and Ryan Martin into third on 35 points. In division two, Kieran Gallant, well done Kieran. Kieran armed with his new tailor-made P790 irons, fitted here last October. He finally got on through last week and obviously they paid dividends straight away. So well done, Kieran. He got 41 points. Great score that off his 17 handicap. Well played. He beat Steve Rainbow into second on 38 points. Who beat Brad McQueen into third on 38 points on countback. Well done, Kieran. Great stuff that. In Division 3, of course some good scores in Division 3. Ty Cook. Well done, Ty. Big hitting Ty. My word, can he pump a golf ball out there? We've had a few lessons recently and he can hit the golf ball a long way, but we've been learning how to control it. He's a great, athletic, strong sportsman, only a young lad, hits at an absolute mile, good cricketer in the past, and we've just had a few lessons in here, just learning how to control the golf ball a lot better, and it has paid dividends. 46 points, well done, Ty. Great score, that. Uh, Justin Nichols, equally, well, not equally as good, but nearly just as good, 43 points. Great week for Justin. He came second with 43 points. Jason Baxter in third on 38 points. But well done, Ty. Great stuff, that. Keep working at the golf. I know you go down the driving range an awful lot. Keep practicing what we've taught you, and that'll get even better than that. 46 points. Well done. And well done, Justin. 43 points. Score is improving. Where is improving, isn't it? Long may that continue. In the professional tours, uh, we had over in Abu Dhabi at the Yas Links, okay, a uh, new golf course over there. They played at sort of Linksy Desert Golf Course over there. It looked quite good. Wind got up a little bit, so Rory didn't do so well, although he had a bit of a charge on the last day. But Thomas Peters, uh, the Belgium lad, he won. Big hit in Belgium lad. He won. He finished on 10 under. Great golf there. Very steady on the last day when all those were falling about him. It was a good golf course, actually. Quite fun to watch. But yeah, Thomas Peters... Made the Ryder Cup in 2016, not done much since, but he's always been a talented lad, putted well, which is the big difference to him. So Thomas Peters won on the DP World Tour Championship, well, DBT World Tour, I don't know, anyway, whatever it's called now, the European Tour. Uh, yeah, he won over there in Abu Dhabi. They're off to the Dubai Desert Classic this week at the Emirates, so that'll be good to see that. On the PGA Tour, Hudson Swafford, he won over in the Californian Desert, uh, he won over there. I can't remember what he shot, but he beat a few of the few of the youngsters, the new players coming through to win his third event on tour. And in on the Lel PGA Tour, I didn't think it was an event, but the Tournament of Champions was held. Um, I, I didn't realise that was on. Uh, but Megan Kang won. She beat Nelly Calder on the last day. Nelly Calder, world number one, went into the last round with a two shot lead, I think. And she didn't play very well. It happens. It's golf. We can never decide when we're going to go and play well, but Megan can won on the LPAGA Tour, the Tournament of Champions competition, so that was good to see. Right, that's everything for this week. Sorry it's such a long uh, video newsletter, but I hope you enjoyed the review of the TaylorMade Stealth and the Callaway Rogue, or a bit of a comparison, not really a review. Uh, but yeah, the only way you can review it really is trying it out yourself. That's the only way. Forget all these YouTubers that say it does this, it does that. You won't know until you try it yourself whether it suits you or not. So the only way you're going to do that is by trying it. Simple as that because everybody is so individual and so unique. What works for one might not work for another. Ollie will smash the Stealth. I'll smash the Callaway. Both as good as each other. The Stealth won't work in my hands. The Callaway won't work in Ollie's hands. What's the difference? Well, we're just two different people. So what works for one will not work for another. So the only way you're going to find out, forget YouTube, just come in and give them a go. Come in and try it. Book out a fitting. Right, thanks very much for watching. 
and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.